What is up guys? Welcome to another video. Oh, the wrong car is out here. Rewind, gotta go back upstairs. All right, let's try that again. What's up guys? Welcome to another video. It is Friday, about to go pick up some food for the family uh, over at this really, really good Mexican spot that is in Carolina Beach. So we're gonna go grab some lunch here. It's like three o'clock right now. And then I wanna talk recruiting. So I wanna give you guys some practical advice on you know, how you can get recruited, how you can put yourself out there a little bit more, and just some tips that you know me who has gone through the recruiting process can give you um, in order to make your experience like the most that it possibly can and to get the most out of all the schools that are recruiting you. Yes. This is a Mexican spot in town that we used to eat at all the time and we had it in a while so we wanted to switch it up, try something new again. So that's my first piece of advice when it comes to recruiting and your recruiting process is don't be afraid um, to communicate and to talk to schools that you may not have heard of before, right? So smaller schools, bigger schools, schools that you might not be that familiar with, keep your options open. Never uh, sh shut down a school right away unless you're absolutely sure that it's you know not lining up with your ideals, but keep your options open and really get to know more schools than just the ones that you can think of off the top of your head, right? Because sometimes those schools that you've never heard of really, really want you and you can learn a lot about them and you find out that that is a school that you could really excel at. Be afraid of new schools, reaching out to new coaches and really varying your options so that you put yourself in the best possible situation to have offers from as many schools as possible. Tip number one, don't be afraid to try something new. Check out this spread, quesadillas, some real Mexican. Great day for some b-ball. Super nice out, hoop up. Take you guys through a quick D1 basketball workout. This is a workout that they're doing at home during quarantine. It should only take you about 20, 30 minutes tops. So all you're gonna need is one ball and a hoop. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take you guys through that. So whenever we're doing drills, we wanna try and make it competitive, right? So that your players are going all out and that they can compete against each other and there's always gonna be a winner and a loser. So even in these drills that, you know, they're doing them from their houses, they can compete uh, amongst each other for time and for score. So for this first drill, it's gonna be five spot shooting. So this is just gonna be in the mid range because I don't have that much space back here, but I'm gonna do it from the mid range. So you're gonna go five spots. You gotta make five shots from each spot. If you miss two in a row though, you gotta go back to the spot that you just started from before. Four. So you're gonna time yourself, see how fast you can do it, and uh, not miss two in a row, because then you gotta go back to that previous spot. We just finished up the drill. Obviously, I'm not shooting from very far out, so that's why it was pretty easy for me, but I'm making the best with what I got in the backyard here. So if you have more space, go a little bit further back, it'll make the drill a little bit harder. So connecting back to the first point I made about being open uh, to new schools in the recruiting process. So don't let the name of a school dictate your decision. So just because you hear Duke, UNC, you know, Kansas, Kentucky, like you hear the school name and it gets, sounds exciting, of course it is. I mean, anytime you get a letter from a big name school um, or anything like that, obviously that's an exciting, you know, cause you've heard of that school, you might've watched that school growing up. Um, and that might be a little bit more exciting than getting uh, letters from, you know, smaller schools whether it's you know eastern something or southern this and it might not be the most um, what's aesthetically pleasing school in terms of the name that comes up and the notoriety of the school but that's like the worst thing you can do is to shut out those schools who you might not have heard of so you got to keep your options open because a lot of times those smaller schools are the ones that are beating the bigger schools mid-major schools at this point are in women's basketball there's not that much of a disparity the only difference is the size and the athleticism 
athleticism of players, right? But the skill level and the, the IQ, the basketball IQ, arguably I think is better at the mid-major level because they have to work in so, they have to work a lot harder to score the ball. So they got to be smarter because they can't just out jump six foot five, you know, post players from BCS schools. So don't let the name of a school dictate it. Keep every option open and look at the win, look at the success of the program. So if you have a, a mid-major school or a smaller school that's you know that's recruiting you hard and they really want you and they've won their conference for the last three four years, you're gonna get to play in the NCAA tournament every single year practically, right? Whereas if you just say, oh, I want to go to the, the Big Ten or the ACC because everybody knows that conference and all my friends are gonna think it's super cool that I'm playing in the ACC, but my team hasn't uh, finished over 500 in the last three years. So, I mean, of course, it's your decision to make at the end of the day. It might be cool to get some gear that says, you know, this school's name or that school's name. But if you want to win and be part of a successful culture and build something special, you're going to go to that school that wants you the most and has the most potential to win games and get into fancy double So I just cleaned up the place a little bit. So I'll just show you guys a quick little tour of my room. Um, ever since I was like younger, I was always obsessed with making my room like, you know, the coolest thing ever because I spent all my time in my room, even when I lived in Long Island, like that's what I did. So I would always be changing my room around, trying to get all this different furniture, just making it like literally like the perfect spot for like a hangout, anything. So I've always, you know, been really, really obsessed with making my room look nice and making it the coolest hangout place possible. So when we moved to North Carolina, this room was like twice the size of the room that I had in Long Island. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna make it like an apartment style, you know, so people can come over, hang out in here, and like, I'll never have to leave. So this is what the room looks like. So you walk in over here, and we got like a whole kind of like apartment style set up. So you have the TV here, closet, closet, um, and like the recliner and stuff. So I would play, you know, all my video games and stuff on this TV, and whenever I have friends down here, this is where they stay. Then I have obviously like my trophy over there and then this is my trophy case, whatnot. These are all like the important trophies, you know, the stuff that actually means something to me up on here. And then this is like the obviously bed sleeping area. And then we have another TV over here. I know I have two TVs in my room. I know I, you can give me shit for it. I know <laughs> this was kind of like my dream bedroom growing up. So I finally kind of made that happen. So doing my best to keep it clean, but I'm absolutely starving now. I think my mom cooked something up. So let's go eat. Oh, are these rolls? Yeah. When did you make these? Oh, oh. spaghetti, fast. some shrimp. Like bagels. Make this one. What up, guys? We're back walking Charlie right now. He's being a really, really stubborn dog today. Just like not going any direction that I tell him to. Doing his own thing, sniffing around, not really sure what he's looking for. So another piece of advice, this one is huge. I'm actually mad that I kind of waited this far into the video to tell you guys about this one, but that is to make sure that you're communicating with not just one coach on the staff, but that you've heard from all of those coaches. Before you make that decision, you better have spoken to every single coach on that staff multiple times, not just one time, or you said hello, you know, on a visit and that's it. And they haven't really reached back out to you because the worst thing that you can do is to only have talked to one coach or have gotten attached to one particular coach on the staff and not really got familiar with the others because God forbid that staff gets fired or those coaches leave um, or one coach leaves and the rest of them didn't really like your game to begin with, you're going to be shit out of luck. So that kind of is a learning experience for me. That's sort of what happened throughout my recruiting process. And obviously I ended up in the place that I needed to be, but I almost got, you know, lured into one school thinking, oh, I really, really love this coach. And I didn't really talk to the head coach as much, which is probably naive on my part, but you get so attached to one person on that staff that doesn't represent the entire staff. Just because one coach likes you doesn't mean that they all do, right? So at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you are on a high, you are a high priority on the list of all of the coaches, not just one. Oh my gosh. I don't know where he's going right now. He's up in the bushes. Nope, nope, nope. Get out of there. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. So first time dog owner, as you guys know, if you know me, I've had cats my entire life. So we just got Charlie like two months ago. So you know, learning the ropes in terms of walking a dog, taking care of a dog, realizing how much work a dog is and how there was no possible way that growing up we could have ever had a dog because we traveled so much for tournaments and AAU and basketball and sports in general, you know, getting used to him. So it's been fun, we love him, but uh, he's a lot of work. All right guys, to finish off the night, I'm gonna show you my protein waffle 
recipe here. So all you need obviously is a waffle maker, um, some protein powder, we got in the closet. Pancake mix, I go with the Kodiak kind. You can use regular, but it just gives you a couple more uh, grams of protein in there. So I go with the Kodiak. This is the cinnamon oat, dark chocolate one, milk chocolate one, all are really, really good. Then you're gonna need some syrup, obviously when you're done. So go with the sugar-free maple, save you a ton of calories. And then to mix in with that, I usually go with some almond milk, not that chocolate one, with some 30 calorie uh, vanilla unsweetened almond milk. And I will actually, not a beer, <laughs> put a little bit of egg whites in there so that the consistency is a little bit better. So we got the scale here, bowl on top. So we're gonna weigh out one serving is 53 grams, so we're gonna go two servings. That's like 106. So around 100, around 100 grams. 50. 56. 90. It's about 105, 107. So we went a little bit over, ended up with 111, but. That's fine, no big deal. So, need 38 grams of this. That's just the protein powder and the Kodiak cake. I don't need that anymore. I don't really weigh out the milk. The almond milk and the egg whites, I don't weigh out because there's so few calories. All right, now as the pan's getting heated up, we gotta grab our Pam spray. We gotta spray the pan here. Well, the pan, the waffle maker. Make sure it's hot first. Better to have too much spray than too little. Much better consistency. All right, pour it in. This might be able to make two but we're just gonna make one big one. All right, this might win the award for the biggest waffle you've ever seen. So, look at it. Came out pretty nice though. Now this is the moment of truth, getting it off of here without it uh, breaking out. Major key right now. Chocolate chips while it's still hot. Sugar free. Check out the final product. Look at these. I'm gonna enjoy this, and I'm also listening to a little bit of a podcast on Coach's Clinic. It's pick and roll coverages uh, with Brandon Chambers, coach from Texas Southern. So we're gonna enjoy this and get smarter, learn something. All right, guys, it's like 10, 15 p.m. right now, wrapping up the night. Uh, I just finished listening to that Brandon Chambers talk. So I learned a ton of new terminology, the different ways that people label uh, certain actions. So cover two off of a blitz or a trap is something that I had never really heard of. So that would be on the second dribble, you're recovering back. Uh, the person who trap is gonna recover back to their man. So this guy was awesome. The talk was really, really good. Um, I learned what a fly switch was, which is something they do in the NBA. And it was a little bit, it took me a little while to wrap my head around how that would work but I think also listening to these talks is helping me like be able to picture things without having to write them down and I think that's huge because you're not always gonna have the opportunity to write something down in the moment if a coach is talking to you or you're in the middle of a game you have to be able to visually uh, you know picture the scenario and I think actually listening to this and practicing doing that is really gonna help me in the future so yeah that talk was awesome learned a ton in that one um, and now I'm just editing up some stuff for tomorrow, gonna start editing um, the morning routine vlog and then gonna get on to this one. I'm also looking at some stock charts. So yeah, I'm kinda getting into the stock market. So I'm just learning. I'm watching Eastern Michigan play uh, Ball State. So just some random games here. And then 
this is the schedule for the coaches clinic talk so all those podcasts that i've been listening to these are you know all the schedule for april so all these different people are going to be speaking but yeah i feel like sometimes i'm just doing so many things at once that it's hard for me to just focus on one thing and i've always kind of been like that and i just want to make sure i'm not really spreading myself too thin but at the same time i love uh, just doing so many different things and I don't really see anything wrong with that so throughout my day you know I could be looking at stock charts for an hour reading about social studies um, listening to a coach's clinic watching a YouTube video on weightlifting or running or something like that and I just feel like I'm all over the place but I actually love it and that's why I always feel like I have something to do so I'm never bored there's always something for me to watch to read to listen to and I kind of encourage you guys to get out there and try like try new stuff that's the only way you're going to figure out what you like is to try new things get out there experiment you will find what you enjoy because i know i have and it's just going to take trial and error of learning about new things so before i close out the video i am going to give you guys one more piece of advice in terms of the recruiting process and that's going to be to go with your gut and also just to be realistic so these are going to be two it's going to be two and one so when i say go with your gut you know when you step on campus somewhere or when you're in conversations with people um that vibe that you get right away right is it a good vibe first impression or was it kind of like eh, i didn't love it right so your first impression is huge and i think if you you know right away you hit it off with with coaches and a campus and you just have a, a feeling that that's somewhere that you want to be Go with your gut and don't let anyone else around you influence that decision. Obviously, your parents are going to have some sort of say in it, but at the end of the day, it's your choice. You're going to be spending the next four years there, right? It could be more if you're doing like grad school, but obviously, you're going to be the one spending the time there. So make sure that it's what you want and not just what they want. And I think that's huge, especially when you're in high school. It's hard for, you know, you're going to get caught up in the academic piece as long with your parents in terms of they're going to want you to go here because of this or because of that but at the end of the day you need to make the final decision because it's your life and then on the other hand is be realistic about the school that you're choosing so if you think that you're really really good right and you might be really really good but look at the people that you're playing against are you really good in your league that's not that competitive um, have you played against better competition? How do you match up against yeah better competition? You might be really really good in your local high school league, but if I were to put you against the top you know 200 players in your state, how good would you be? So be realistic about your abilities. Uh, don't sell yourself short, obviously, but at the same time, don't be delusional because I feel like that happens a lot. You know, people get hyped up by all the people around them, their friends, their family, and then it's like a reality check when they get to a school that maybe they shouldn't have committed to because they're not going to be able to compete at that level. So make sure you're actually, you know, taking the time to watch that team play, that the school that you want to go to. See if you really think that you could earn playing time on a team like that. And then figure out if you're okay with just being the 7th or 8th player off the bench playing 10 to 15 minutes a game. That's There's nothing wrong with that. If, that's, if that will make you happy and you want to go to a big school just for the experience and not really make that much of an impact directly on the court, that's fine. That's up to you. But if you want to be in there contributing every single game and feeling like you're really impacting the team and the program, Program and helping them be successful, then you need to make sure you're going to a school that's going to allow you to flourish and to really show your abilities. But that's all I got for you guys for this video. I'm going to wrap it up. It's been a late night. I know this one was a little bit all over the place as usual, but I love covering these topics, just giving you guys whatever advice I can. So if you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.